Hi, welcome to another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And this guy ought to be pretty familiar to all of you, Larry Hedrick. And just, you, you're out here by happenstance yes. today at the uh, <laughs> Superstition Mountain Museum, so we can't pass that up. <laughs> and we, I thought what we would do is come up here and actually have the Superstition Mountain proper that we, we, I grew up knowing the Superstition Mountain. Never thought about anything behind it that there's a mountain range back there, a whole, whole, a whole other place back there, a whole other world, so <laughs> to speak. Uh, but we're in front of the Superstition Mountain, and I uh, just want to point over in this direction, in the front of the mountain, uh, there's a, a cave that has, has a prospect in it, and there's a, an old, what's left of uh, a miner's shack, which is basically just the grounding for it uh, up here. And that's where I was shot at. And we'll, we'll take a hike up there someday and, and, and fulfill that. But, but uh, l while I've got you here, I want to talk about some of the things that you've been uh, told about these mountains here. And, and we've got the praying hands right there. We've got the witch, which I think is the witch that are on the Peralta stones. And those hands from here, I mean, they do look like they're praying. And then the witch, which has, a, or priest, some people call it the priest, but the thing that caught my ear when you were talking about the here up by Siphon Draw, there's these two spires there, the two spires, and in there, in between them, you've been told, not Larry, this is not Larry, but you've been told that that's where, guaranteed, <laughs> the gold is. Well, of course, according to legend, this is where the massacre took place up where the praying hands were as the Peralta party was leaving the superstitions. They were driven up into these rocks and massacred by the Apache Indians. And uh, uh, several years ago, probably 15 or 20 years ago, uh, a person who I won't name uh, took us up there. Uh, 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 several of my friends, including the Attorney General and, a, and a, a policeman from England that was visiting over here. And in that notch that's square, on the right of the praying hands is a slab of stone that has broken off and fell over against the other pillar. And this is where this gentleman was absolutely certain that the Lost Dutchman gold mine was. Now, I mean, not be looking at the right place. I'm talking about these two right here that look like rabbit ears. You're talking about further over there? Further over to the left, yeah. To the, to the, to the left. And, uh, okay, so it's over in that where the shadow is. Right. Okay. But. Uh, according to a gentleman who, um, who has spent 50 years, more or less, seeking the Lost Dutchman gold mine, he told me a story of a troop of cavalrymen that camped over here where Weeks Wash was, which mm -hmm. is just right across the road from the, the museum. And he sent out some scouts, and they had scouted up in this area, and much further to the right, towards those two rabbit ears you're talking about, uh -huh. Uh, they found some bones, and there was absolutely no clothing or anything left. It was been there plenty long as ago. So that was almost 20 years after the massacre happened, and was much further away from where everybody says that it happened. Now, who, so you're saying it was more this way more than More to the right. More, more to, to the, the right, right here in front of the mountain. In front of the mountain. All right. Uh, right behind this tree, you can't see it, but that's where Palmer Mine is. Yeah. That was developed many years later but it would be like those stones to the left of the tree that, that this, where the bones would have been found. Wow, that's, now that's fascinating because uh, is that the area where supposedly the two gentlemen found the sacks of gold or they found pieces of uh, like the saddles and stuff like that? Do you know that story? Well, uh, a, I'll have to get the names on, on those. A sack of, of gold was found. It was referred to as Kachira's gold, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, at the massacre ground, it was more around the around the hill where the praying hands is, and down uh, closer to First Water Road. It just to stumble on them by accident, and the belief was, of course, all the mules were driven off during the fight, and that's who the ore was attached to, and one of them fell off and was found there, you know, quite by accident. Yeah. Well, that's part of the legend about the crosses, which we're going to be talking to Liz Nicholas about, and we've talked to you about the stone stone crosses is that there a lot of people's feeling is that uh, the the they broke off once they saw the the indians over here uh that were attacking them uh because they're in sacred mountains here 
And so they, they took off this way, not knowing there was a group of them over here. And uh, according to that legend, which makes the Peralta stones and the crosses come into play here, is that some of them went off towards what is Florence Junction now, and the others went off this way. They say the Peraltas went off that way and the Gonzaleses went off this way. That's what, they, that's what I read, okay? Uh, again, everything that we talk about is conjecture here, and we, we've got to specify that. It's just fun. <laughs> but uh, so they went off this way, and then they ran in, across the others over here, and that's where the, the crosses dropped off the burrows as they were going this way, which would go along with what you're saying about the gold, mm -hmm. that they would have gone off here. And, of course, that stuff would have been buried with the rain and things over time. Of course, they, they wouldn't be out there in the open going, today, oh, look, hey, there's some <laughs> gold there. Hey, look, there's a couple crosses there. You know, it wouldn't happen. Um which is what it took to find these things, was it took them digging them up to, to find these things. So, you know, where there is a legend or a myth, there's, there's a spark of truth there somewhere, always. The thing about the massacre is, I know that there was a massacre that was put in the newspapers of the time that happened either 10 or 20 years before the one they're talking about here, but I haven't been able to find any information about the massacre that took the Peraltas out. Uh, have you ever had any information on any news articles? Well, only according to the legend. No, I okay. haven't. I haven't read any news stories uh, okay. other than stories that were in the newspaper. Okay, but I know. will say that there is, there are news stories still available that talk about yeah. a massacre out there. But it, it took place several years before the time period that we're talking about. Right. Uh, so you know, again, are we meshing legends together here? You just don't know. No, I, I can't answer that. Uh, you know, uh, the Indians really didn't have any use for gold that was in ore. If it was gold, they yeah, knew what well, to do with it. Yeah, didn't they just leave it there? They would have just, just left, left it, it there. They were, they were after the burls and weapons and whatever they could get. Yeah. But uh, the, the gold meant nothing to them. Yeah. The ore. The, the ore. ore. Because uh -huh. they didn't know how to get gold out of the ore. Well, if the Indians didn't know how to get gold out of the ore, why were they protecting these mines? Well, I, uh, it might be just because you were here. <laughs> so basically, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> but, then. you know, according to one of the other legends, it, were, it was their mines that they were mining. But you're saying they couldn't get the gold or didn't know how to get the gold out of the ore. So that doesn't hold water either. If they were the Indians, the Native Americans, if it was their mines, they wouldn't care about that stuff. Well, uh, I never heard that it was their mind at that time. It, well, see, it, I'm going back to uh, some of the other stories. It's like when you, right. uh, Lust for Gold, the movie with Glenn Ford, Barry right. Storms, which he sued them over, that film, <laughs> uh, talks about how the Indians were up there and they were mining and, and so forth. And then the Mexicans came in and they were mining. That's when they killed the Mexicans and they, they hid all the mines. Or I can't remember how many they said in the movie, like seven mines or something. But it goes anywhere from seven to 107, you know, depending yeah. on the legend. Well, so, if I'd have wrote that story, I might have sued him, too, because I don't think the Well, Indians he's in were, the movie. They yeah, have a guy, right. uh, William Prince, playing him in the movie, <laughs> and it's a, it's a whole totally bogus movie. Of course, Jay Silverhills is in it. And Will but Gears, it was the good. <laughs> it was a good movie for the time, but it's, it's totally bogus. Watch the movie and then right. know that everything in it is totally bogus. Imagine making Julia Thomas the villainous. <laughs> in the piece when she actually was his savior right. or saviorist. Right. I don't know. But, okay, so you do believe that the massacre happened more in front of the mountain. They weren't hiding in the rocks, which seemed like the more likely place instead of out in the open. But there's rocks to the right of all that. You can okay. see them there. All right. and, and that's supposedly where the bones were actually found. Well, from looking at it from here, it looks like there's just a little up Mm -hmm. croppings of rocks and then most of it's you know just hill and so forth but mm -hmm. once you get there there's much more oh, yes. of it than that much more. now one other thing uh, i was reading about a cathedral jesuit cathedral that people swear was over off of well i read off the peralta trailhead and you say that you've heard the stories that it was closer to uh, 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 queen valley or florence junction uh well two places uh if you, if you saw one of our previous uh, episodes, uh, I worked at Queen Valley, and that's when I heard from Hart Mullins that there was a Spanish uh, missionary on top of one of the hills where the Whitlow Dam was built. Well, now, I are never... you talking about a Spanish mission or a missionary lived there? A mission? 
a mission. A mission, okay. And then there was another one, if you look at the stone maps that has the trail with all the dots in it coming up to the heart, mm -hmm. where it crosses the Gila River more to the east of Florence Junction, about 10 miles with another Spanish mission. And it's marked on the stone maps. You can, you can see them there. Well, it's interesting because in the, the, their records, the Jesuits, they didn't build anything, uh, any, any buildings or anything, uh, north of the Gila River. So if there was something there, that's, that's an interesting thing to think about. They also say the church itself proper uh, had no interest in gold whatsoever, that they were just interested in proselyting at the time. So if there's any history of Jesuits up there uh, uh, mining, or, or down, rather, down south here at the time, uh, that they weren't doing it on behalf of the church. Now, the story I had, they have uh, King Carlos, Spain, uh, drove him out of there because he wasn't getting what they had promised him as far as the amount, their tithing, so to speak, or his proper amount of uh, uh, the gold. And so uh, he drove them out, and that's when he brought the Franciscans in, and that's when the legend or mm -hmm. the story is that the Jesuits came up this way, and you've got the cross in the Bat Cave, and and no Batman there, but, you know, you've got the cross up there, and you got all this other stuff, the legend's up here. There's got to be some spark, some bit of... No pun intended, but the best word to use is nugget of, of truth <laughs> to these stories. Well, I, you know, I, I'm not going to set myself up as some kind of an expert. No, no, I, no. I can I, only I, tell you what I uh, have heard from other people. Well, and that's all we want, because like yeah. I tell people, like being the official uh, film, Western film historian of Arizona, I'm not the expert. I'm an expert uh, amateur. I, I love to hear people talk, and I'm always going to learn things. And so nobody's setting anything up. We just, you know, right. these are the, we're talking about things that have been said about the air because mm -hmm. every page that we open up opens up another volume of, of history that mm -hmm. we hadn't heard or we hadn't talked about different things up here. That's so it's just, it, it's, like, it's like an onion peeling it away. Layer upon layer. And I can do all sorts of, uh, what do you call those, anagrams or whatever? Metaphors. <laughs> Metaphors. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> That's why Dave is here. Metaphors for all sorts of things, you know, apples and oranges, looking for a needle in a haystack. I'll, I'll, I can go on all day. But anyway, uh, so we're just talking about, we're just right. talking. Person to person here. Everything I've ever heard, every time you get into it, something else crops up that's totally different. For example, only one or two people were supposed to survive the massacre, uh -huh. but they stopped to bury the stone maps on the way out. <laughs> I tell you, I don't know. <laughs> well, it, you know, if the, if, if the stone maps dropped off the burrow, then it seems uh, likely that in the stories I read, they didn't bury them. But again, over time, with the, the erosion and the weather and so forth, mm -hmm. that you know the rain would wet and dampen the ground and yep. it would sink in and so forth. So that, that makes more sense to me than someone stopping to bury them. Because if they're on the run, That's but, right. oh, hold on, everybody. Yeah, I see them over there. They're coming towards <laughs> us. We got to stop and bury them. No, that, it, you know, it, it's not going to happen. Right. So there's always different ways to look at it. But if it did happen, and I always say if it did, then it seems more likely that the crosses and the Peralta stone maps over time were buried in there. Because like you said, if, if the Native Americans back there, the Indians had no interest in gold, then they'd have no interest in those crosses. That's right. And, and, and stone maps. So, you know, always things to think about. Every, Larry, every time we get together, we just open up another novel here, another story. These another things. can of worms. Another, well, basically, yeah, because I'm sure we're going to hear from somebody out there that knows the whole story. Oh, but anyway, so uh, we'll get to uh, show the praying hands over here. Fascinating view from here. And, of course, the witch and or the priest, which is interesting because it's got the arm up there, just like, uh, you know, like it would be holding a cross. And I find that very fascinating. So could the cross maybe symbolize as the shadow comes down, it hits the praying hands, and that's, you know, where the cross should be. See, we're, we're coming up with all sorts of things here. <laughs> here you go. Well, there you have it. Another interesting interview with Larry Hedrick with the superstition mountain behind us and everything that lies behind it. See you next time right here as we talk about more Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. <laughs>